Good afternoon, thank you for watching Running Light Gaming. Uh, we're going to be doing another video. Um, this is um, a continuation from my last video on Final Factory, uh, the build that I'm effectively calling the Monolith, which is simply a singular structure. This is a heavily modified version of the base game because uh, it is running a few mods, so being able to build this in a normal build uh, probably wouldn't quite work. Um, but it is kind of my own uh, little project that I'm kind of working on at this point. Um, the game itself is still kind of in an early uh, build phase, so there is still a lot of things that could be changed over the course of time. It, um, it's uh, worked on in here. But um, I'm just kind of showing off where I'm at. Currently at around 17 hours of gameplay, so this is pretty much what I've been building up for probably about 17 hours or so. And right now we're kind of just sitting in my electrical grid. Um, now I could have probably made this much more efficient, but one thing you're going to quickly realize is nothing that I've done up to this point was really based on efficiency. It was more so just kind of kind of like the way this looks. So we made it much, much, much larger. And so... Um, I think right now we're running at something like five or six thousand solar panels. Yeah, so we're about five thousand right now. Um, so uh, we did expand fairly recently, so we had to effectively double the size of our power grid um, because we were running out of power on this initial batch here. And I'm sure there are much better methods of getting electricity in the game. Um, but that's just how I chose to go about it. Um, the initial power grid was this little section here. And then I quickly started to realize that I basically needed a much larger, you know, setup. So that's when you start to see these larger builds over here. Um, but this was pretty much what powered, like, the very early part of my build, which would pretty much be, like, this little section here. Um, some miners, and that's pretty much about all this power down here. This is a huge heat sink because uh, we were starting to run into trouble with uh, uh, temperatures. So right now we're running about negative 70 to 80, um, and that's with quite a bit of stuff added recently. Um, so these are all basically flying down to uh, my research, which we'll go visit pretty shortly. Um, but it's pretty much a non-stop um, amount of ships just floating down there for that. Um, so this is some of our, this is our first production line. So this is pretty much what we use to kind of get the initial braids and everything kind of started. Now one thing um, you're quickly going to realize with the setup I have, I have no inserters. Uh, I still have been working through trying to get the throughput on a lot of this stuff uh, working a little bit better. And like what we could do. Well, so. Those are solar. We're just going to grab a few more connections because. So, because this was kind of losing um, volume here, we're just going to push a bunch more through that side. So, a lot of what I have here is somewhat customizable. So, if I need to kind of move resources from one side to the other, um, I just have to tweak a few little minor adjustments, and then we can basically push things to focus on one side or the other more. And um, so, like in a lot of this, I had to push a lot of orange straight through because uh, I wasn't quite getting enough up here. So there's going to be a lot of kind of just solving things by just adding more layers on top of the current layers. But this is the main brains behind a lot of the uh, keeping everything running. So this is going to be everything from like my uh, map production to various things like, um, like this builds my storage units. I run a lot of solar panels, so 
this I have like two or three of these just to make uh, solar panels nonstop. So I'll come through, empty all these out, and then um, go expand my that production number so often. Since everything is connected through piping or the conveyor, sorry, the connectors, um, connectors are basically what power everything. So that being said, it's it's a huge power sink for my entire build right now. Um, as you'll quickly see, I could have probably ran struts. The, uh, the conveyors do make things a little bit easier if I need to turn or do anything like that. If I wanted to run um, like struts, for example, I'd have to strut into, like, say, a, a storage and then strut off the storage into another direction if I need to. So, I mean, it's definitely doable. But um, another thing I sometimes use are the, the station cores. And then the station cores can also be a, a means of utilizing, uh, changing what direction resources go in, which is kind of what most of these lines are usually set up like. Uh, this is basically where the bats are if I need to restock for going and attacking. So I might actually go through and expand this at some point. Um, I was having electrical issues, which is kind of where why you see so many uh, panels on these at the time. I'll probably go through and just expand this another five to six layers here um, since our cap is now 390. Um, so this is our ice farm. Um, it is kind of dangerous to go through there, but I have found that um, the asteroids do not collide with each other, so basically we just stacked it so that um, yeah, it can basically constantly produce stuff. But when I was making um, some things, you can basically go through here and pretty much pull as much uh, organic material and ice that you need. Um, so basically I have these all set up to where they'll constantly push more organic into the other ones. And then at this point, there's a 50-50 chance it'll go to the main storage or back into the loop. Uh, but I figure if the loop gets full, then uh, that'll push it towards a bigger storage. And then right now we have this stuff all going down here. And here's kind of where we're producing some more advanced uh, versions of our uh, research stuff. So like uh, the right one here is our planetary. That is what this designs for. And then this one's for our stellar uh, research. And we'll go visit both of those plants very soon. So another kind of step I kind of ran into, and I'm sure there's a way to kind of optimize this a little bit further. But I kept brainstorming through different situations and trying to figure out what would be the best thing. Because the, the big orange ones here, you can only push four resources through. And then the little ones, you can push three through. Um, now, the easiest fix would have been just to put in a few inserters by all means like that would have made life so much easier on this entire process. Um, however, uh, one of the limits I've been putting on this build is that we would not be running inserters. So, um, or freighters or anything like that, because that could have just flew over all the, the things. So basically what I was trying to do is utilize these to effectively allow me to overlap certain resources as I need them to. Um, so that's pretty much what this entire mess is and why there's configured the way they are. But this basically produces two stellars, um, at a time. Now I could probably boost this one a little bit, but at the time planetary was doing fine. Um, I'm actually not finished yet, but yeah, I could probably use a little bit of a boost on the planetary side as well. Anyway. So that is at least the main section. So this is kind of the more built up version of everything that we're doing up to this point. And then gradually we started moving further out. And this is kind of where we're starting to build out sort of smaller locations. And as I mentioned, um, because of how the electrical system works is we do have to pull it a certain way. Uh, and that leaves everything uh, powered up. 
And so in this case, we have a couple uh, doing planetary, which, truth be told, like I said, we could probably expand this just a bit, which we'll probably get to that pretty shortly as well. Um, because initially, I just kind of did this as a quick thing, and then I just kind of forgot about it, and it just gradually built up research over time. Like, our uh, stellar side has actually been going a lot quicker than this one is. But I think what we might do is expand at least. Yeah, we don't have resources right now. But anyways, so the next thing we have to go visit is our resource hub. Again, this is all linked together. So this is one big infrastructure thing. Um, now this section is strictly for the purposes of, I didn't want to keep going down and siphoning off um, basic resources from the, um, the main base. So all this is, is a whole bunch of storage units. So like this bottom layer here is, uh, it doesn't go anywhere, it's just strictly storage. So if I need a bunch of blue, I can just pull the blue here. If I need green, the bottom layer is, again, it doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the top layer does go somewhere, and I'll show where that goes to. And same thing with this one. The uh, top layer goes nowhere, so we can pull resources for that, and it's perfectly fine. Asteroid. We're gonna make two planetary just because we should expand it. Then um, we have a small production location here. Um, at the time, I was having a little bit of trouble with uh, uh, miner bots not coming up here for whatever crazy reason. Uh, so we just built one up here for the time being. Then I went through and manually built a bunch of uh, miners initially. And then this kind of helps keep up with it, but they are actually flying to different areas now, so it, it works out a little bit better. So I think most of these should be pretty full. Yeah, so it's been keeping out. So these three areas are basically just the different types of resources. If I need um, the orange, green, or blue, I can just come through here and pull as much as I need to. And that's what the entire purpose of this section. Um, same thing up here. I mean, it's just another little hub that pulls resources from here. So that's basically this upper section. So basically these three rocks were close enough, so I basically turned it into a little resource uh, complex. And then, of course, we have the planetary research on that side. And then, let's see if we can go ahead. So now this may take quite a while for it to actually um, build up more. Like we could probably increase the production of the planetary bots, but at this point, it's kind of really it doesn't matter too much. I think we have hit 30k, and then at that point, it's over anyway. Um, whereas we kind of built up a larger stellar network just because we had to play catch up, and that also had to get to 30k. So, yep, so the northern part resources and planetary research. Um, there's also a bot making facility up there, which we could probably increase that as well since the entire network is linked. Um, so at this point, now we're going to going down to the southern side, which is kind of the newer part of our project. Though this research base has been going for a little bit. Um, this is pretty much what we're doing for the asteroid research. And, um, 
Hence why you kind of see so many flying down pretty much constantly. Is that um, and it seems like it keeps up pretty well. Yeah, all these ships that keep flying down pretty much consistently are just buffering out this whole network here. We have a few flying down on the left side here, and those are going down to our uh, stellar location. But, um, so yeah, this is our research hub. This is pretty much what we use for just the first research level. So that's your main currency. Um, I figured we needed to make sure that was much higher. We have had a little bit of issues with um, some of the spawns of the enemies kind of getting a little bit closer. So um, we've been gradually putting down a few more um, uh, these little uh, defense platforms. Then here's kind of our new project is uh, we just started doing the Dyson Sphere. Or, yeah, so Dyson, a Dyson segment. And that'll be kind of our next big project is we're probably going to start mass producing all three of these things. Um, so I believe we have a few different resources relatively close. So. Like we could produce off these three here. Those are three different types of resources. Um, otherwise, we can have to try to go through here and see if we can find any more asteroids as well. Um, but yeah, otherwise, we do have a couple of planets down here, and it seems like almost all of our stars are bunched up down here. So that'll be kind of our next few projects, is basically trying to see if we can... Uh, Get the dice in up and then kind of capping out the last bit of our research, which should be the singularity navigation. So, uh, that said, um, I do hope you guys enjoyed the build. Uh, that's currently where we're at right now. Um, and it's something that's been pretty good about the, the community so far is that. There seems to be a lot of mod potential, so if you kind of want to make changes to it, and it's kind of it kind of reminds me of Factorio in that sense, is that if you're looking for different things that you can kind of make some changes to the game itself, to kind of make it your own thing, you can actually do that, and um, you're certainly, you know, that option certainly exists in the game, and I know that's pretty big, especially in this kind of community where uh, the creativity of what you want to do is going to kind of determine whether or not, you know, it's something that you can kind of fit into what you would like to play as well. Because um, everyone kind of wants to make their own little project. And in my case, um, this is more of kind of a peaceful map, so I don't have to deal quite as much with, like, attacks and stuff. And for some people, that may not be their thing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I put some limitations on what I can do. And then I also just kind of... Um, had some modifications made to the game to where I can kind of dabble with it in a little bit different way than someone else might be able to as well. And that's kind of the cool thing with the game so far. But um, yeah, that is pretty much um, if you want to call it my crib, this is my crib. Uh, this is what we've currently built up. Like I said, uh, as of right now, this is kind of the stats of this entire monolith right now. So we're, we have about 20, well, a little over 18,000 stability. Uh, power required is about 13,000, and we're currently putting out about 26,000. Um, because I actually recently, uh, greatly increased the amount of power that we had because we kept hitting this cap here, so we basically just massively extended it. So I could pretty much continue to build a little bit further before I hit that cap again. And um, but that kind of gives you an idea of just the sheer size of what we're kind of working with here. Like the number of uh, connectors is about 6K, it looks like. 
So between everything, between the connections of going everywhere, the uh, something like that, I've laid around 6,000 different uh, uh, connectors so far. And of course, there's about 5,000 uh, panels, and we have quite a bit of other stuff going on too. Yeah, there's about 600 of these uh, station cores. So, I mean, it's a pretty large setup so far. Like, and as I said, this is one singular connection, so everything's linked together. Um, which does make it a little more difficult because if I break a connection somewhere, which does happen sometimes when I'm rebuilding stuff and redesigning stuff, so I've been having to make a lot of things where they kind of connect in more than one place to kind of make sure that, to mainly maintain the connection on it. Um, we could lose electricity to a whole bunch of different areas with that. Um, also, one other thing. Let's go ahead and add... Now, we're going to put a little bit larger of a buffer here with uh, our ice production, so we really always have more to pull from as well. Because there has been times where I need to come through here and pull a bunch of organic matter and ice, and then um, I basically starved out some of those for a little bit, which unfortunately kind of messed up production. Yeah, so that is the build so far. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, etc. Uh, if you do enjoy what the game looks like or how it plays, um, I would definitely recommend uh, taking a look at it on uh, Steam, uh, which is called Final Factory. And um, as of the uh, the game designer has been working uh, and doing quite a few updates on it all the time. So there's going to be constant changes to it and improvements into the game, uh, even within the, the time frame that I've been playing it off and on. Um, so as I said, we're kind of at about 17 hours in on this one, and um, you probably expect a few more videos in the, in the future with more changes um, of this build, because we're probably going to try to see how far we can go with it. And um, So otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.